Praise the Lord, both my wife's side and my side of our family, uh, we really feel the needs of each other. And so somebody needs something financial or physical, first person to help me my be your family. We were moving to South Florida to establish this local church. In our motorhome, the engine blew in it. We're on the side of the road. We got an estimate, $7,000 to put an engine in it, but the guy said, I don't want to do it. So that's what I charge you if I would do it, but I don't want to. It's too big a job. And so I called my dad. My dad said, well, I'll come down and help you. We'll do it ourselves. That's what family does. So he came down. We rebuilt the engine. That engine went bad. We rebuilt it again and um, made it down here. And that's what family did. You know what? When we were doing that, we stopped in the local church. And we plugged in there. And you know what? They were like family. We ended up staying with somebody. And that's what family does. Family sees common needs, common goals. And they come together for a common purpose and the church is not ambiguous. It's not just everybody that's saved is loosely a part of a grand organization. There is such a concept as a local church with real family ties and real obligations for them. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, here's, here are some things about church membership that defines it. First of all, uh, church membership is joining to a local body of believers for worship, fellowship, and service. We found that in our text, actually. Number two under what is church membership. It is a means of equipping the church with people to perform the mission of the church. The Great Commission is given to the church. Study, evangelism, and soul winning. And it is the mission of the church. And it's carried out by individuals who are part of that church. And you, as a soul winner, are a part of the local church. We'll mention this in just a little bit on how to be a when we talk about how to be a good church member. But the first area for your, you to be involved in a local church is in the soul winning ministry. The first area to be involved in, with in a local church is the soul winning ministry. That's the mission of the church is to reach the lost for Christ. It's the primary goal and purpose. Everything else you do to serve in the church is to put forward that effort. And so that's your primary mission. Acts 2 1. Through 41 through 47, we see church memberships first uh, really talking about the addition concept of these people were counted into the church, if you will, is in Acts chapter 2. So they were added to the, to the church. They continued in the functions of the church, the function of the church, breaking bread, fellowship, prayer. Of course, baptism was right there mentioned. That's a function of the church. Uh, the Lord's Supper was a function of the church, and it's mentioned in this text. And uh, preaching the gospel and taking care of the needs of the church. Um, the church, this is such a trite statement. It's so true. It's been said so much that people don't think about it. It's kind of uh, like the what would Jesus do question. That's actually a really good question. And it ought to be the standard for, by which we live. But it's said so much that we don't think a lot about it. And one of those other um, concepts, I guess, that people don't understand is, uh, well, let me, let me move on. I'm taking too much time with this, with this concept. I'm sorry. don't mean to jump over things, but we don't have time. Acts chapter 4 and verse 4. We find the Scripture says, How, many, how be it? Many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. According to these two passages of Scripture, how many people are part of the church in Acts? 8,000. At least 8,000, but Acts 2.47 says that they were praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And so there's a daily soul-winning program, preaching of the gospel in the church. But there are a couple of events where people just came in mass and became a part of the church. So in Jerusalem, there's probably, I would guess by this time, conservative estimate would probably be eight to 10,000 people. That would be a conservative estimate because you have to remember that Christ preached the gospel at Jerusalem and there were already a number of disciples who were believers before Pentecost. And Jesus was, many believed him, many rejected him, but he wasn't wholly rejected. So before the church, before Pentecost, there were people that were a part of this that were already believers. And they weren't still a part of Israel when the church was established. Regardless whether the church was established when Jesus said, Thou art Peter, on this rock I will build my church, or whether it was at the day of Pentecost. The church has been established at this point, and so believers are part of the church. The church is the age in which they are now living, and everybody understands it. Okay, by the way, what's the word for church? There's a couple words. Uh, ecclesia means uh, those individuals who have been called out of the world. 
Uh, but we want to teach the concept of church membership today is with regard to keys to spiritual success. So verse 32 of Acts chapter 4. Uh, the scripture says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. So this matter of church membership is very well understood to be a oneness, a family and a fellowship. Now, let's talk about family. We did this in our Sunday school meeting this morning. And let's just talk about uh, attitudes. I want you to think about this when you think about church membership and the obligation to be part with a local church. I think it's important that you like your church. Anybody think that there's it would be good to not dislike your, the church that you go to? Come on, wake up. Yes, you ought to like your church. Okay. Do you think that you'll always like everything about your church? No. No. Realistically, you won't. Do you know that most people, now just before you say, Pastor, I don't agree, think it through. Most people go to church based on whether or not they like it. It's true. It's true, isn't it? It's not a matter of, they don't usually ask the question, am I supposed to be part of this church? It's whether or not I like it. And you know most good people oftentimes dislike so they don't have to be a part of it. I'm talking about good people here. In other words, this, okay. Man, I'm telling you, I thought that was, I mean, they claim to be, they may be sound doctrinally, they may believe the right things, but you know what that guy in that church did to this person? And, I mean, I'm not going to be part of that. I mean, I just can't. I mean, they, okay, let me ask you a question. If I did some prying into your family affairs, if I really got to know your immediate family, would there be some lazy ones? Would there be some rebellious ones? Would there be some ones that they're getting there in your immediate family? What if we got a little further away in your family? Would there be some ones that weren't good family members? Would there, and I don't want you to think about this. Does that have, do you leave your family over that? In other words, mom and dad, you know, they don't, they, they fight. And they shouldn't, but they fight. Well, I'm going to quit this family. No, you, do, you want mom and dad to not fight. Um, little sissy lies. Mom and dad are working on it. Do they get rid of her? Well, this one's a liar. No, they help her not to lie. Right? And you know most people think that everybody in the church, and seriously, ex with the exception of themselves, because they don't see themselves as part of the family, they come to the church and they look at it and they say, the church ought to be like this. Well, is it true? Are they correct? Could they support that with Scripture? Yeah, they sure could. But does that mean they shouldn't be part of that family? Or does it mean it's a good reason to leave the family? You know what a family does? Family pulls together. And if sister has this problem, man, you pull for them. You really do. You try to work with her on it. And you try to help with it. And I would submit to you that what you need to look for in a local church is not necessarily perfection. But by the time you are... Uh, but by the time that you join is the time that you look for perfection, not when you become a part. Have you ever seen somebody, okay, think of a church that would be a good church if it wasn't for its problems. Seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm not even being, I'm, I'm kind of joking, I'm being a little sarcastic, but think of one that would be a good church except. And then think of the person in that church that makes it would be a good church except. I mean, you can talk about it. It's like they, they, they do this, this, and this. And, but man, I'm telling you, they've got some faithful people. And brother so-and-so and his wife, they're just as faithful as can be. And they just serve the Lord there and they're just unchanging. And it does just doesn't... I mean, they had this happen with the pastor and they had this blow up over here. And uh, boy, the church is just in torment, but they're still there. And they're still serving the Lord. Now, let me ask you a question. This is the question we ask. How can they do it? How can they stay there? 
How can they put up? I've, I've asked people, I've said, I don't know, brother, they say, what do you think I ought to do? And I say, well, I don't know. I don't even know how.